Okay, so now let's say you've got this, you're still trying to optimize this. So you've got this, you don't like this long number that this is giving. Let's say that you want this to be rounded off to some significant digits. Let's say two. Um, now you can optimize. Again, don't focus again on all the stuff that we've done already. And this has already been taken care of. Um, so all I've done here is when, so this part here is exactly the same as we did before. All I did here was around the return, instead of just returning 80 content, I rounded this to two significant digits. So I said, um, we did the round function last time. I used the round and this is how you normally use the round function. You normally put a comma because um, this is going to store a value, which is this 0 0.444. And then you just say to how many significant digits you want to round this off. Now note, I've changed this to GA here. So, um, but yeah, so there we go. Um, you can change this to anything you want now because this has been changed to first and second nucleotide. Okay, so there it's rounded it off to four, to two significant digits. Okay, now I just want to show you, again, you can add this as an additional argument um, so that before we just add these three, you can add a fourth argument so that the user can specify if the user um, wants to add if the user doesn't necessarily need two, maybe the user is using something where they really need to know up to four digits, um, to four significant digits, the user can then specify um, how many significant digits they want, okay? And then um, here, because the usual, for example, the user will put in four significant digits, this part is the same, but instead of here now being a two or a four, it's going to take this value that the user is giving and it's going to add it to here. Okay, so now when the user calls this function, they're going to use this exact same thing. They're going to tell you for which they want to calculate it for. They're going to give you their DNA and they're going to say five significant digits. And this will give you five significant digits. And again, this is all up to you. You can decide how you want to write your function. By and, and maybe I even you might even think of additional ways to better this, right? Uh, one of the first things that you may think of is why give it as as two separate first or second nucleotide. The person could give a list, um, and like I said here, uh, why not account for this being a file? So then you should be able to have in the block of code that it's reading in a file. It's splitting the lines, whatever it needs to do. Um, you you will write the function according to you to how you want the user to use the function, or how you yourself want to use the function. Okay, but I want you to notice a trend in that we add everything in the arguments that we kind of want the user to have control over. I don't know if you've picked that up, but every time we want the user to have control over something. Um, or we want to make the, the, the function more flexible, we start to add arguments to there. Now, obviously, there comes a time when it becomes too much, maybe. Um, but this is usually even the algorithm that I wrote for my um, for my my PhD. Um, it takes in um, an, the argument for, for example, the the size of the file. Uh, takes in cut of four cutoff values, um, and and that all goes into a decision tree. But the user is able to to say, um, and you normally would specify. So you would say file is equal to, for example, um, cutoff value one is equal to whatever. But we'll have a look at that as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so arguments, which is this part over here, that's inside the brackets. They allowed it to add flexibility for the user to the function. Okay, one thing I think that we should mention is if you add those significant um, or if you add those arguments, 
and the user does not provide you with the four arguments that this function requires. You saw that it gives an error if you give nothing, but it also gives an error if you give only some of it and not all of it. And one of the ways in which you um, you can fix it, so I just want to show you, for example, this is the function that we wrote. It now has four arguments. The user is only giving three. And then if you try to run this, it will give an error to say missing one positional argument, which is significant figures. And also notice that it goes sequentially. It automatically assumes the first one belongs to this first argument and the second one belongs here. So then here you will see it's telling you it's missing the last one, significant figures. So to avoid this having an error, you can add a default. And you've seen it when we, when we, when we looked at some of the help, at the help menu, that some of them would have default is equal to, and it would have a value there. That is to avoid the user, um, getting an error when they don't provide you with all the arguments. So one of the ways you can do is you can say, if the user does not put in the last argument, for example, then I myself will add two as a, um, two significant figures, figures as by default. And if the user does give it, then we will use what the user gives. So if I now run the same thing that gave an error before, then it will use two significant digits. And of course, if the user then decides um, to give the significant figure themselves, then it will, get, it will run what the user inputted.